Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I used to be an instructor, so I have to, you know, make sure that all my students are awake. <laughs> and you got my last name. Well done, Peter. Um, I'm going to do a quick intro today on what our uh, custom post types and a little bit about uh, custom taxonomies and advanced custom fields. This is a beginner talk. So if you know what these things are already, go and do some, uh, some nice chatting around. And uh, this is probably going to be absolutely boring for you. What I'm presenting you with today is an idea of what these things are and a bit of a case study so that you can start to understand what they are. How many of you are running your own business and need to know what these are for yourself when you're hiring a developer? Ooh, okay, a couple of, come on guys, put your hand. Okay, these guys were my students, okay? I'm gonna point them out only because they know how I deal with this. And, and Zora back there, yeah. So, you need to, you know, get a little bit more active. Anyway, so, what the heck, yes, heck, are CPTs and ACFs? Well, we're gonna find that out today. So, this is me. Um, I am just recently the customer experience coordinator at Weaver Apps here in Toronto, Canada. Or sorry, Hamilton. <gasps> <laughs> You're gonna edit that, right? <laughs> oh my god. Let me try that one again. Hi, my name is Shanta. I'm the customer experience coordinator at Weaver Apps here in Hamilton, Ontario. And uh, I just got uh, recently hired there about five weeks ago, so they were kind enough to uh, give me this nice shirt to represent. Um, I am a former instructor at Sheridan College and at Mohawk College. And if you want to see how I teach, you can go and ask my former students. Um, I am a serial word camper. I've done probably more than 30 word camp talks in various places like New York, Chicago, LA. Um, I've actually even attended one in Mumbai which is absolutely amazing to go to. Um, I've been the co-organizer for uh, Toronto. I've done co-organizing for this WordCamp three years now, um, and as well as Milwaukee, if you can believe it. Milwaukee has a great bunch of people, if you can get out there. Um, I'm also the lead dudette. Uh, according to Nod Matt at GoDaddy, uh, as a young woman or girl who is very popular or admired by her peers, I thought that was the best compliment that anyone could pay me, so I use it now all the time. So these are some of the people I need to thank for getting me here. Um, these, uh, a couple of these people are the lead organizers out in Ottawa who actually added me at the last minute at Ottawa last year to present this uh, presentation. Megan Haynes and Maddie G, who's actually taping this right now, um, actually offered me couch space, uh, who offered me couch space to actually stay in Ottawa when I was still looking for work last year. Um, uh, Michelle also did as well. Um, Dan and Michelle Schulp, uh, who's on the bottom there, actually helped me understand this in the first place. So when I was having trouble coming up with the curriculum for Mohawk College, I said, I need somebody to explain this. And Dan and Michelle took me under the wing and went, okay, this is how it works. I'm like, this is great. And of course, Morton, if you don't know who Morton is, he's the guy in the uh, bottom corner there. Um, he actually does the course on lynda.com. Uh, he does a really, really amazing job of all of this, so please do check them all out. And they were absolutely wonderful. He was even tweeting back at me when I said, I don't understand this. And then he came to me and said, okay, so how can I improve the course? So he's really, really an amazing instructor. So please make sure that you check all these wonderful people out. Uh, so this is our, uh, our agenda for today. We're going to go through a quick review of what posts and pages are. If you don't know what those are, I'm going to run you through them because it, it does help to understand what they are so that you can then get to what is a custom post type. Um, we're going to go through CPTs, which are custom post types, a quick review of categories and tags because you're also going to need to understand what those are to understand what ACFs are. Uh, and then I'm going to give you a bit of a case study that um, I just built on my own. Um, not necessarily for a real client, but I also have a background in real estate. So that's usually one of the ones that I use to actually build out a lot of my examples. Um, and to give you an idea of what that is on the other side, that is my slide deck. Get it? <laughs> hey, easy, easy. This has WordPress value, okay? Um, in 2015, when I was in Milwaukee, um, Mark Benzikeen was building the deck so that he could host the speaker dinner at his home. And it wasn't done on Thursday morning. 
when we landed on Thursday morning, Kira and I went out there to help build this deck. We considered this our contributor day. And we did plant, yes, yes, a quarter of this deck it has, is, um, what's the word we're looking for here? Anyway, it's, it's, it's sovereign land, yes, it's sovereign land. Um, so, uh, and, and of course, by the next morning, he ended up with a kidney infection or kidney stones, so I had to go and give his talks the next day. So, piece of Milwaukee belongs to Canada, just so you know. Okay, so let's review exactly what we're here for. Pages and posts. Pages tend to be more static in nature, okay? They are the types of things that you are going to, um, that you're going to post or write that aren't really going to change on a regular basis. They more than likely will not change over time. Um, and if they do, it's usually small tweaks, like maybe you've won another award and you want to put another one underneath. So an about me page, about the team, those types of things that you're going to update as things get added, but sort of on an as-needed basis. Um, is the date that they were posted relevant? Not usually. Not usually. Um, so that's usually one of the sort of key points that I make. Um, it doesn't use categories, but you can have sub-pages. So for example, if you want to have an about the company and then have other pieces about you know, the team members and so on, you can have those as sub-pages. So it can use that level of hierarchy. Um, they are hierarchical in nature, and in a way, sometimes they are single in nature. They can sort of stand on their own, um, and, and that could be it, right? It doesn't necessarily have to relate to a whole bunch of other stuff. And please excuse me, I have a bit of a sore throat, so I have a candy in my mouth, so please excuse me if you can't hear me very well. Um, Posts are more dynamic information. They are the things that say, hey, I was attending WordCamp Hamilton. See, I got Hamilton right this time. Um, they are more time sensitive. Think about when you are looking for information, uh, like a technical article. Something went wrong with my Mac. Okay, so I'm going to type in something. If I come up with an article from 2008, how relevant is that probably going to be to me today? Unlikely. Doesn't mean it isn't valuable, but it probably won't help me today. So if there's a date attached to it, that's probably more like a post. It's relevant given the time in which it was posted. Okay, does that make sense? Um, it does use categories and tags. Things like upcoming events or events attended, those types of things are you know, really helpful to understand. They are usually, in, by default in WordPress, are reverse chronological. So the most relevant stuff or the most up-to-date stuff falls to the top and then goes in reverse chronological order. And it's non-hierarchical. So I can go here and then go over here and then that could be something else. And so it, it literally is more like the wiki style stuff. Does that make sense? Any questions so far? And by the way, I'm happy to take sort of quick clarifying questions, but then we'll leave sort of more detailed questions till the end if you need to, okay? So custom post types. They can act either as a post like or a page like. They can act as a standalone piece of information or they can act more like a post. You could call it a hybrid or you could call it sort of something else, right? Um, they can either be organized by categories or tags if you want. Those are what are built into WordPress already. However, you can also create your own level of organization, which are custom taxonomies, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. Okay? So categories are what I would call the major classification, right? Typically when I give my usual content architecture talk, I usually say that um, the categories tend to be the major classification and ideally the post should only belong in one category. So think of it that way, okay? It shouldn't belong here, 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 and here. No, it belongs in one. Does it belong in travel or does it belong in events? Those types of ideas. That's kind of the idea. Tags are more like keywords. Tags are more non-hierarchical, okay? You can add, say for example, when I posted my slides today, the posts that I put, or the tags that I gave it were things like Hamilton, WC Hamont, 
WordCamp Tour 2018, those types of things. It's meant to be, what are sort of the keywords that would draw somebody to this? Okay, and those you can have more than one of. Okay, does that make sense? So the reason I'm giving you all of this is because not everybody sort of understands this part of it, and I found that it was really hard to talk about custom post types unless you understand that. So that's why I'm sort of covering this again. Um, these will show up as a different entry on the dashboard, okay, categories and tags, but they can be called anywhere on your site. So custom post types can be used with categories and tags if you so choose it. Or you can actually create your own, what they call taxonomy, okay? Categories and tags are a method of organization. That's what a taxonomy is. You may have your own method. You may not want to call them categories and tags. You may want to call them something else, and you can do that. And again, we're going to talk about that in just a moment. So some examples of custom post types. E-commerce product pages, right? You have a product page, and on that page, you will probably have an image. You may have a field for what the cost of the item is, how much it weighs, those kinds of things. Those are not inherent on a post, right? You have a title, you have categories, you have tags, and you have the body. That's about it, right? Here, you can actually edit it, and it's not just about what the user sees, okay? Let me be very clear about that. There are two levels to this. One level is what the user visiting the site sees. And then there's also a matter of what, and we're gonna talk about the advanced custom field shortly, about what are, is available on the back end as well, okay? So custom post types typically are what you might call the wireframe of what a page or what a piece of content will look like to the end user. Okay, does that make sense? I think once I start showing some diagrams, it may make a little bit more sense, but you know, if you're completely lost, just go, uh, no, all right, carry on. I'm, I'm obviously losing my touch. Okay, um, portfolio pages, right? You may have pieces of your work, whether it be artwork, whether it be photography, those may have, you know, when the photo was taken. It may have a date attached to it that's slightly different than the standard date that you would have in WordPress posts. Um, author pages, right? You may have a bio about that person. It may have, you know, awards at the bottom of the page. So it also deals with what pieces of content are going to appear on that page. Movie and TV series pages or people pages on IMDb. And we're going to show, I'm going to show you and guide you through each one of those in just a moment. There are two ways that you can install or use custom post types. One is by creating your own theme, maybe from scratch, and building it into the theme itself. So many times you will end up downloading a theme, perhaps from the repository, and you're downloading it because it allows you to do certain custom post types. You know, let's say that you're, um, well, let's say, let's use the real estate example, right? You're a real estate agent. And perhaps that particular theme allows you to do your own listings or does it in a certain way or things like that, okay? Um, a family tree maker, for example, may allow you to have a page where it has the birth and death dates or, you know, where that person is buried, where they were married, all of those kinds of things. So it has those fields in it but it may lay out the page very differently, okay? So that's a, another way of example of downloading it by a theme methodology. You can also create this and activate it on any theme by creating a plugin. I know, I'm scaring some of you right now. You are going to create your own plugin. Let me tell you, this was the first plugin I ever created, okay? It's not as hard as you make it out to be. Okay, this is how I learned, is went on to lynda.com and I learned it from Morton. Morton Rand Hendrickson is, is absolutely amazing at this. This is the methodology that he teaches, okay? And it actually is, you can use your own theme. You do have to make changes to the theme, so you may have to learn about child themes. So I warn you on that front. But you don't have to completely use a brand new theme that is specifically designed for that. You can use your own theme and edit it using a plugin, okay? 
I'm not going to give you all the code and everything today. You can go and find Morton and ask him, but I'll, or I'll run a workshop someday. But anyway, that's how you can implement custom post types. So we did talk briefly about what a taxonomy is. This is kind of a scary word for some people. It is an organizational system. That's exactly what it is. A taxonomy is an organizational system that allows you to relate one piece of content to another or similar items. Okay, it's a grouping methodology, if you will, or sometimes a separation, right? These belong in this corner, this belongs in this corner, and never the two shall meet. It's possible, okay? It's just a method of dealing with organization. That's all it comes down to. You're either going to have something that's very hierarchical or something that's non-hierarchical, okay? Very flat or straight up and down. Quick review of what categories and tags are. Again, categories are major classifications of information. Events is a great example, right? You may have a whole category called events. And under that, you may have, you know what, these are WordPress events, these are Drupal events, these are Joomla events, these are meetup events, these could be almost anything, right? You don't have to go into that level of detail, but you can. It depends on how much content you write. Okay, and what is the best, method, best methodology? Well, the better way is to raise it up into thinking about your navigation. Okay, I'll, I'll leave you to that talk for another day. But the basic idea is, how far do you go down? Well, if you've only got one post in a category, it's probably pretty thin, right? So keep those types of things in mind. And it can have subcategories, as I mentioned. Um, but they are much like pages in that regard. These are hierarchical, okay? So you have a main category and then you may have subcategories under that. Tags describes the content using keywords. WordPress typically recommends somewhere between five to seven tags. Please do not put 30 tags on your posts. It actually works against you, okay? For those of you who don't know, I know very little about SEO, but that part I know, okay? It can actually work against you because they think that you're trying to game the system and Google looks at it and goes, yeah, you don't know what you're doing and they actually rank you lower. That much I know, okay? So as I said, WordPress usually recommends about five to seven. So now we're gonna delve a little bit into our examples. So I'm gonna talk about the taxonomies first. Think about how you're going to organize your information first, okay? So in our real estate example, I may have a listing type, okay? That may be, in my case, I may have listings for condominiums, I may have listings for townhouses, I may have listings for detached houses or freehold houses. I may choose to do that slightly differently. I may decide that I wanna do this by rentals and by purchases. This is up to you. You decide how this gets organized. I'm simply giving you one example. Features could be, this has a fireplace. This could have a pool. This could have this, this could have this. But the idea here is that each of these listings only belongs in one of the listing types, okay? Now, I'm using the term condominium to mean like a high rise, okay? So just to be clear, you can have a townhouse that's in a condominium, but just for sake of clarity, that's what we're going with. So a condominium is in a building, okay? Townhouse, detached, single individual homes. You can't have, in this case, a condominium that is a detached home. It doesn't work. Do you see where I'm going? So this is why I say this is built in the sense of a category. This listing belongs in one or the other. It doesn't belong in both, and it shouldn't, okay? However, any of those items could have a fireplace. Any of those items could have a pool. These operate more like tags. So they can be applied to any of these. It is non-hierarchical. Do you see the difference? Questions so far? Okay. So these now will show up as part of your listing. So when you look at your dashboard and you see posts and pages, let's assume that we've done it by plugin, and now we have a listing 
on the left side. I want to create a new listing. Well, usually under posts, you see categories and you see tags. Well, now under listing, we have type of listing. So this tells us we have a listing and then we have a manner in which we can organize those listings, which is a type of listing. I'm just calling it that because it just seems a, a little bit simpler to go with. So now you'll notice on the side here, the type of listing, and now you can add your own types of listings. This is what shows up before you type in condominium and whatever else have you, okay? So it operates much like categories, okay? So if you ever need to find an example of how this works in your own dashboard, that's where you look. Does that make sense? Go ahead. That's after you have created the plugin. That's correct. Sorry, could you repeat that one more time? It's almost like subposts that are like so, so the question is, is, is this like subposts? And is this install, is this what you see after the plugin? So in answer to your first question, yes, this is what you would see after you've created and installed the plugin. The second part of this is no, it is not a subpost. It is its own thing. You could actually, in theory, get rid of all the categories, all the tags, all the pages and all the posts and you would still have content because it is something else. It's kind of like Arrow. I had to become something else. Yeah, yeah. Okay? So it's, it, it, it can be whatever you want it to be. I'm simply giving you sort of a, a, a drawing of a comparison of what you might already be familiar with. But now it becomes whatever you want it to be. Okay? Any other questions? Does that help? A little bit? Okay, good. So now you have this type of listing, and this is where now you can add those types of listings, like you add a category. Okay? Okay, so advanced custom fields. I've written advanced in brackets because custom fields is what we call it in the WordPress world. Advanced custom fields is actually a plugin, it is the actual name of a plugin. My advice? Don't code this yourselves, okay? ACF, or Advanced Custom Fields, is probably one of the most supported and well-maintained plugins in the environment. It's not worth going and coding it for yourselves. Go and install the plugin. And then donate, please, or buy their plugin, okay? Because they really, really do a good job of this. You don't have to code it all, right? Um, again, so it's a standard in WordPress. You have to have a titled, right? This is a field, for example, okay? You have your body of your post. That is a field, okay? When we start getting into the real estate example, price is a field. Do you see where I'm going with this? So these are the types of things that you need to start to figure out now. And these, again, are not necessarily all things that will show on the front end to the visitor. These fields are things that you could create on the back end in your dashboard, especially for those of you who are developing for clients. This could help your client enter the data more effectively, right? Just keep that in mind. Excuse me. It can hold different types of data such as text, numbers, this is the smallest of the three concepts. So taxonomy is the biggest one. It's a method of organization. Within that, you have different custom post types. Custom post types contain custom fields. Does that make sense? Okay. So this is an example of what you might see in your dashboard. I've now created a new custom post type. And these are the custom fields using the advanced custom fields plugin that I have now said I want this field to be associated with this custom post type. So this is a listing, for, let's say, and believe me, it can get very, very complicated. So I'm going to try and take this step by step. So I've entered a purchase price. I can say that that purchase price is a number. I can say that that is in US dollars. I can say it's in Canadian dollars. I can say it's in euros. I can say whatever I want, meaning that the advanced custom field 
will take care of whether or not it puts a symbol in front of it or not. Does it show two decimal places? Does it show commas? You can set all of that in to the field itself by default. And then even if I type in two, zero, 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 whatever the thing is, it will format it as it needs to. Okay? This is one of the powers of it. Especially if you are developing this for a client. You want to make it as easy for, you don't want to have to have them remember to put in the symbol, put it in this way, and then remember what the format is. Let the plugin and do it for you. Okay, let that do the heavy lifting. Um, the municipal address is an example, okay? And these are required pieces of information. Now, whether you show it on the custom post type to the visitor is another matter, right? You can code that into the theme. But here, you've at least got that information right on the listing itself. And maybe you only show that to logged in users. You see where this is going. It can get very, very complicated. But think of the power of this, right? This is stuff that you could build for any client. And again, if the user is logged in, let's say it is the agent themselves or somebody that works in the office who needs to be able to see that information. You've added a listing, and of course, this listing must have a municipal address. You cannot have a listing without it. That's why it's a required field, right? There's a municipality, total square footage, whatever you want. But again, I'm using this as a real estate example. Go ahead, Sherry. So you can build um, a site that has certain content on it, but build some custom pages only for subscribers? So can you build custom content? for subscribers, 100%, 100% you can. Um, it's gonna take some planning, but yes, in essence, you could. Um, there are other plugins that will, so this basically helps you design what I would call the wireframe or what it looks like. There are other plugins that will help you to restrict content um, based on whatever criteria you give it. I know that there are a couple, Matt, do you know of some of those uh, plugins? Okay, so, sorry? Wishlist is one of them, apparently. Um, look at Pippin's plugins. Pippin Williamson is one of the um, most recognized uh, and respected WordPress developers in the environment today. He's given a ton of talks at WordCamp US and, and all over the place and is a wonderful, wonderful advocate. Um, he does easy digital downloads, and I know that they, I just don't remember the name exactly, but if you look up easy digital downloads, they have uh, a methodology for restricting content. I just can't remember the exact name of the plugin. So you're saying you could do it this way, but there are ways to do it. No, no, I'm saying this is what you would actually design, and then the plugin for restricting content will say, well, you see that custom post type over there? Don't allow that to be seen unless. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's, 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 it's related, but it's not the same, okay? So um, going back to this, you can also, by the way, and this is where I say it could get really complicated, you can have certain fields appear based on the selections of other things. For example, you will always have, and these are, these are fields, by the way, that will show up for every listing, right? Even if it's a vacant lot, fine. You just say that the square footage of the lot is whatever. This could very well be, and you'll notice here, I kind of snuck this in. <laughs> I've created another type of, another taxonomy called type of ownership, right? We talked a little bit about this just a moment ago while well, I snuck it in. Is this a purchase property or is this a rental property? Okay? Well, obviously, if you're giving a rental property, it's usually cost per month, right? If it's a purchase, it's an outright purchase, and it's probably going to be, you know, $200,000. You're not going to find a piece of property in Los Angeles for that, but okay. I can dream. Um, so I've chosen purchase, and these are the fields I get. Now, these fields that I've highlighted in green are going to show up regardless of whether it's a rental or whether it's a purchase property, because every property, regardless of what type, regardless of the type of ownership, has to have this information. However, what happens if I change it from purchase to rental? The purchase price at the top, 
becomes irrelevant. Well, what happens if I say to this custom field of mine, <laughs> I only want you to show if the type of ownership is equal to purchase. Now you're starting to see where this is going. This is how, especially those who are developing for clients. Okay, I know that I'm talking to that, that group, but you guys are probably going to be the ones that have to deal with this more than even the clients on their own end. The clients on the, uh, of themselves who are running their own businesses need to understand this so that they can instruct the people who are developing for you. Okay, that's the reason I give these talks. Okay, so that you guys can talk to one another. So based on the type of ownership, I can have this field show up or this field show up or this field not show up. I can have other fields populate based on a selection in a drop, drop down menu. This becomes a very advanced type of form. That's ultimately what this now becomes. Do you follow where I'm going? So it sounds very simple at its surface. Know that there is a hell of a lot of power behind this and that it can actually help if you really think it through. And this is the point I'm trying to make. You really need to think this stuff through because the more you think it through and think about, well, what if this happens? Well, then I have to do less work at the end of the day. Or my client has to do less work at the end of the day. They have to do less thinking about what format to use. They don't need to think about that because you've already programmed it in for them. You had a question. Yes, so how do we then connect this to the, the user side of things? So with posts, you have the post and it appears, pages appears, you just put in the right. information. Is that, uh, does it become a menu item? So the question is, is how do you get this now to show up, I guess, on the front end to the visitor? Or, yeah, or is there a page with a, a default a, template that says? A default template. So the custom post type, like I said, is your template. Right? It becomes a template file. You would then um, follow the instructions to actually insert those fields, and it's usually a little snippet of PHP code, into the template where you need it to go. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So uh, on the real estate side for listings, is there a default template page for listings? Yes. And then you can create, so th there is a default listing page, but then there is also further sort of code that I put into this. That it, that's why I say it does get quite advanced. But what you can then do is say, well, if I choose that this is a rental, I want certain other fields to appear. But as well, the custom post type that I've selected will show those fields depending on the type of ownership. whatever you want it to show, not everything, it will show whatever code snippet that you've told it to show. For example, we've added the address here, right? But you may say, I don't want that to show on the template because usually when you have a public listing, it doesn't show. Nowadays, it's not as, you know, it's probably far more uh, uh, transparent, but back in the day, you never got the address. You had to go through an agent to get that, right? So. Um, again, that's sort of an advanced thing, but what the, the, the reason I'm bringing this up is to give you an idea of the power that this has. And it can get that complicated. The end result of this, at the end of the day, if you're completely lost right now, find somebody else in this room who is developing it, or find somebody else out there who's developing this, and get them to help you. Hire them, okay? The biggest thing at the end of the day is if you're waiting six months to learn this or you have to take six months to learn this and somebody else already knows it, you're losing six months worth of business. Keep that in mind, okay? Know when to hire somebody, okay? If you wanna know how to hire somebody, look up Lucas Cherkuski's talk in WordCamp 2014, I think, in Toronto. He gave a great talk on how to hire a developer. So you can see this can get very advanced. Oops. Okay, see, I knew it. Come on. There we go. See, I was going too long. Anyway, so I'm going to go through a couple of really quick examples to give you an idea. Yes, Peter. Yes, you can. That's true. So uh, the point is, is that you can use those advanced custom fields in ordinary templates. Yes. Remember, 
create a child theme first. That's my only... Well, there you go. So you can use it in the footer. Um, so here's an example. IMDB. Okay, if you look at IMDB, and we, all, we probably all search this at one time or another, IMDB has very different fields and very different layouts depending on the type of content. If it's a TV show, it will show the number of series, or the number of seasons, rather, right? It airs on this date. You, know, you can tell I'm a Doctor Who fan. I've got stuff. Anyway, um, so it, it airs on this date. It has, you know, this many videos, but it has the stars and everything else, which is also in a TV series, right? Or which is also in a movie, but it has a different feel. It has seasons, whereas movies don't. A movie, on the other hand, may have the release year at the end of it. It has, again, a different layout. But the content that you're displaying is also different. Every one of them will have a synopsis. Every one of them will have a cast list. But remember that the series will also have a cast list based on the episode. Do you see how difficult this gets? Okay? So these are examples of what you would call custom post types. And then, of course, you have people. For those of you who don't know, that's Sean Hooper. Okay, look him up on, at, at Ottawa. Um, yeah, that's funny. So, what's the difference? On a person's page, you have David Bowie. In this case, you have the date of birth. You have, perhaps, their date of death, in this case, unfortunately. Um, the role that they had in each one of these projects that they did. They might have been an actor, they might have been a producer, they might have added music. What are they known for, right? On the case of like a TV series, they may say, well, if you like this, you might like these other ones. See the difference? So the layouts of each of these pages is very different depending on the type of content. Each one of those layouts, I would call a different custom post type. But related to that, it also shows different fields depending on what type of content it is. Or what, yeah, what kind of content it is. Whether it's a TV series, whether it's um, a movie, or whether it's a person. Make sense? So this is a real live example. This is, you know, starting to, starting to sink in a little. This is an example of one of my classes that actually came up with this, and I thought it was really well done. So the overall thing is a custom post type. And this is an example of a custom field. This is the rating. This is a wine one that they gave us. And they said, you know, rate the wine. This is actually an example almost right out of Morton Rand Hendrickson's lynda.com example, right? Rate this wine or, you know, whatever that thing is. So that's a custom post type. That's a custom field. The type could very well be that, what type of wine is this? Is this red or is it white? It's not both. Do you see the difference? It could be a rosé. That's a different type of wine. <laughs> you see my point. So how do I know which which is which? <laughs> Custom post type answers the question, what is the content? What is this piece of content or what is the layout of this content? Taxonomy answers the question, how is this organized? Right? In the case of the wines, is this a red wine? Is this a white wine? Is this a rosé? Is it something else? You know, who knows, right? Is it sparkling? Is it champagne? You decide, okay? Custom Fields answers the question, what is this piece of data in relation to the custom post type? Okay, does that make sense? So a real estate example, you have a custom post type. The listing is a listing for every real estate piece of information, okay? So that's the listing for the firm itself, okay? Tax on, yes, go ahead. Oops, sorry, there you go. Sure, and I've posted the slides, by the way. Okay, so they, they, if you want, uh, go, actually, you can even go to my website, shanta.ca, and I've posted them all there. Yes, sorry, I should have mentioned that at the beginning, my apologies. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to move ahead because we only have a couple minutes left and I want to leave some time for questions, okay? So I'm, I'm going to sneak past, but I'll, I'll get you afterwards if you need to. So um, the listing type in our case here is either condominium, townhouse, or detached. The, and those are like our categories. It can only be in one of these things. 
This is a type of a hierarchical taxonomy. In the case of features, those are a f more flat, non-hierarchical type taxonomy, and that could be a fireplace. So what, you know, does it have running water? Does it have a pool? Does it, whatever those things. The custom fields, for example, a sale price, which shows only if it's a sale, if it's only a purchased property. A rental price can show only if it's a rental. Um, the size of the unit, which is shown on all the listings. Condo fees, which is only shown on condos. Right? So you can see how complex this can get, but how powerful it is. And it really, really does help the users. So to give you an idea, this was an example um, that I did on a demo site of mine, which I, I'm still yet to find, so I apologize. I'm going to find this demo. Either that or I'll just rebuild it. Um, so a custom type is the property listing. Okay. The taxonomy is a listing type, right? So the type of listing, the type of ownership, and the tags I can also use, right, which are our features. So that, somebody asked earlier about how you show this on the front page. So I edited the custom post type template, which is the listing template, to show this particular data. And I put in type of listing, and then you put in a little piece of code that will show whatever the selected one is. Okay, so there is a little bit of coding involved, but trust me, Morton does a really amazing job between his custom post type talk and his advanced custom fields talk. Okay, they're really, really good. This just combines the two. So custom fields could be the address, the price, the square footage, and I can show those however I like. The desktop website can add taxonomies to the navigation. Okay, so just like you can add categories to your navigation, you can add pages to your navigation. You can add posts to your navigation, but please don't do it. It hurts my feelings. Okay? That just means that you have to keep changing it every time there's new data. No. Just guide your people in the way that they need to be guided. And yeah, I've already gone on about that before at another talk, so you can go and watch that. But you can add those categories, sorry, those types of listings in our case, to the navigation. So I show up on the website and I go, yeah, you know what? I'm interested in a townhouse, an apartment, you know. So you can see detached home, condominium, townhouses. I can also look at purchases and rentals. And I've just added them into the, into the navigation. So I can go to this website and go, yep, that's what I want. How do I want to view this information? Do I want to view it by the type of listing? Or do I want to view it by the type of ownership? If I'm only interested in rentals, I'm going to go to the rentals. Guide your people to where they need to be. Okay? Please, <laughs> don't make them think about this. Okay? That's the end goal. So there's some references for you. There's all of the lessons that he did on lynda.com. For uh, those of us that live in Hamilton, how many of you are local? Great. Go and get a, uh, a, um, a membership card to the library. You can access all of this stuff for free. London Library. London Library, Toronto Public Library. Most of us in Canada actually get this stuff through the library. So definitely worthwhile. Um, if you want to find out more about the custom posts, or say the, just the pages and posts, if that completely blew your mind, um, I did a talk in Montreal a couple of years ago on this, and that's probably the better one that I did. Um, by all means, go and visit that one as well. We have time for maybe one question, and then I would promise I am around for the rest of the day, and I will be changing my t-shirt because I'm one of the organizers. So, are there any questions really quickly? Otherwise... Thank you all for coming. Thank you for sponsoring us. Namaste. <laughs>